The Titanic was a British ocean liner that struck an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in 1912. The disaster occurred on the ship's first voyage from Southampton, England to New York City. The ship struck the iceberg at about 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, two and a half hours later, the huge ship broke in half and sank into the cold water. The ship held at least 2,205 passengers and crew. The historians are not sure exactly how many people were on the ship, so they can only estimate the disaster's death toll. More than 1,500 people, many wealthy and famous passengers perished. They included the millionaire John Jacob Astor and the businessman Benjamin Guggenheim. And as most of you know, the Titanic's captain, Edward J. Smith, went down with the ship. The Titanic was not the deadliest at-sea disaster in history, neither was the Titanic the first or the last famous ship to sink on its maiden voyages. But for some reason, it remains the world's best-known and most storied shipwreck. People have devoted more books, articles, motion pictures, and websites to the Titanic than to any other ship ever built. The 1997 film, Titanic, ranks as one of the most expensive and popular movies ever made. People continue to discuss and debate the ship and the manner of its sinking today. The RMS Titanic was the largest and most luxurious ship of its time. The designation RMS, which stands for the Royal Mail Ship or Steamer, pr proves that in addition to the passengers, the ship carried mail under contract with the British government. The Titanic was built by the shipbuilders. Harland and Wolf in Belfast, Ireland. It was built for a shipping company called the White Star Line at a cost of $7.5 million. At the time, the ship was the largest moving object ever built. It measured 882.5 feet long, 92.5 feet wide, and 59.5 feet deep. When loaded, the ship pushed aside more than 52,000 long tons of water. The White Star Line like other large shipping companies, publicly emphasized safety as its top priority, but speed and luxury were more attractive marketing features to travelers. Though some of the Titanic's features compromised its safety, the ship only carried enough lifeboats to hold about half of its passengers and crew. Legally, it had enough lifeboats for a ship crossing the Atlantic, but the laws and force of the time had been established many years earlier. When transatlantic steamships were a lot smaller and carried fewer people, many people believed the Titanic was unsinkable. They even went as far as to say as if that God couldn't even sink it. Its hull was divided into 16 watertight compartments. Even if the two of those compartments flooded, the ship could still float. However, the bulkheads that separated these compartments did not go up to the higher decks. When water rose high enough, it could rush over the top of the bulkhead and into the next compartment. Other ships had repeatedly warned Captain Smith of icebergs in the Titanic's path, but he barely ever moved the ship's route. He also failed to slow down to avoid the obvious danger. Based on testimony after the disaster, the ship was traveling at nearly top speed, far too fast for such conditions. According to one theory, Captain Smith took such risks to set a speed record, which would have increased the fame of the White Star Line. The ship was speeding at about 21 knots per hour, which is about 24 miles per hour, 23, shortly before it sideswiped the iceberg. The, the iceberg scraped against the ship underwater. The collision burst riveted steams into the ship's hull. It breached five adjacent watertight compartments in the bow of the ship. Salty water quickly flowed over the tops of the breached compartments into the neighboring ones, flooding the bow of the ship. Evacuating the Titanic was difficult and confusing in the dark night. Only a few hundred of the crew and passengers were able to get into the lifeboats. The sinking ship tilted tide sideways, making it difficult to lower the lifeboats on one side. The ship's band famously played music during the evacuation, possibly to help calm the passengers. As the Titanic's flood, flooded bow sank into the water, the stern rose up. Gradually, the angle increased until the ship was almost vertical, with its stern pointing nearly straight up into the air. And finally, the stern's weight caused it to break from the sinking bow. Both half quickly plunged into the depths. Before the Titanic sank, its crew sent out a distress call by radio. It became one of the world's earliest SOS signals. The RMS Carpathia of the rival Cunyard Line heard the Titanic signal. 
The Carpathia had just left New York for a cruise to the Mediterranean Sea. The ship's captain, Arthur H. R Rostron of England, immediately decided to steam to the Titanic's rescue. To conserve steam power for the engines, Rostron shut down all heat and hot water to the staterooms and cabins, and all the passenger areas of the ship. The Carpathia quickly sped at about 60 miles per hour to the doomed Titanic's last reported location. The Carpathia arrived around 4 o'clock a.m. The Titanic had sunk more than an hour earlier, and at first Carpathia's crew only saw an empty ocean, but they soon spotted one of the Titanic lifeboats by 9 o'clock a.m. The Carpathia had rescued about 705 of the Titanic's passengers and crew from the frigid waters. Most of the survivors were women and children. Captain Rostron decided that there was not enough food and supplies to continue with the survivors east across the Atlantic Ocean, so he returned to New York. The Carpathia's crew and passengers assisted in the rescue and were hailed as heroes. In September 1985, a team of, of French and American scientists found the wreck of the Titanic. The team was led by the American explorer Robert B. Ballard and a French oceanographer Jean Louis Mitchell. The ship lay in two sections about 350 miles southeast of Newfoundland at a depth of about 12,400 feet. A 1986 expedition documented the wreck more thoroughly. In 1987, treasure hunters began recovering artifacts from the wrecked ship. Over the course of seven expeditions, they brought up thousands of items. In 2012, around the 100th anniversary of the Titanic's disaster, the artifacts were put up for sale at auction. The sale carried strict conditions. The artifacts were to be kept together, preserved to museum standards, and made available to researchers. Shortly after the shipwreck's discovery, the United States Congress passed the RMS Titanic Maritime Memorial Act of 1986. The act des des designated the site as an international memorial and proposed regulations for exploring the wreck. And that's all you need to know about the Titanic. Can somebody please call the Coast Guard?